ladies and gentlemen, it is the People's Champion, the Asian Robot, and I'm here to teach you how to use the strikers properly. Now, people have been asking me for this tutorial since forever, and I completely forgot about it until recently people asked again, and I said, okay. Because I don't use the strikers often, but when I do, people are often say, like, can you teach me how to use the strikers? So I said, okay. Now, first of all, we'll go to the training ground so I can familiarize you guys with the strikers. But I'll start by, you know, saying if you are of Asian descent, you do not need this video. You already know Kung Fu. Okay, your family has already taught you Kung Fu. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay, but if you, if you really want to know how to use the strikers, you know, we'll do so now. Um, okay, so while we load in, background. Strikers are fist weapons. They have a very short striking range. Okay, they're also not that great at part breaking. Not because they deal low part damage, but because they are blunt force weapons. Um, punching a specific part can be a little difficult at times. The strikers are kind of are the kind of weapon that basically goes in and overwhelms the enemy. All right, so let's go up to this training dummy here, where hopefully nobody will bother us. Let's start by taking a look at our move list. So. Rapid strikes are fast attacks that deal light damage. Heavy strikes are powerful attacks that deal heavy damage, okay? Your mantra meter is basically something that when you complete a combo, all right, it allows you to use a particular technique. How many mantras you complete uh, will decide what technique you get to use, all right? Surging will refresh the mantra meter's timeout, okay? And it just, and it does flat damage. It's a flat damage dash, okay? That's all it is. Think of it as Akuma's uh, Shadow Walk, but that you can, well, you don't get any invincibility frames, all right? Now, activating your mantra technique is done by holding the special key, all right? There are three techniques. Tempest Form, Karma Breaker, which requires two. Tempest Form requires one mantra. It increases your attack speed for a long duration, makes you faster. Karma Breaker will deal damage over time and deal some damage on hit. Okay, it requires two mantras. And your third is your special, so you can have either Adam and Bolt or in this case Titan's Crash, which is a close range wave that damages nearby targets and deals bonus damage when you have the other two mantras active. Okay, very good. Um, I don't think you need to know anything else. Now, combos. There are three combos. Light, light, light. Okay, this is three hits very simple spirit barrage light heavy heavy this is used for interrupting it basically creates a wall of fists in front of you now the first light attack cannot interrupt only the two heavy attacks can interrupt so be very aware of that okay ideally you want to interrupt the behemoth using that flurry of fists because it basically creates a nice little wall of damage that you can use to block off a behemoth and the mighty squall is three powerful strikes this can also be used for interrupting but because it's slow, um, it's not exactly uh, used often for interrupts. Very rarely used for interrupts, but, but it does work well, okay? All right, so let's show you how these combos work. One, two, three. Usually after doing this, right, I will activate my Tempest Form. Tempest Form, your attack speed's increased. One, two, three. One, two. I'm ready for a Karma Breaker, okay? Now note... How did I get to this stage? Let's let the meter run down and let's do it again. Okay? This time I'll explain the combos instead. Light, light, light. Tempest form. Light, light, light. Light, heavy, heavy. Karma breaker. Okay? Light, light, light. Tempest form. Light, light, light. Light, heavy, heavy. Karma breaker. You got that, right? Let's move on to the third step. Now... Your Tempest Form and Karma Breaker buffs, you'll see them on the top left-hand corner there. They're active, so watch this. Light, light, light. Light, heavy, 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 heavy. Titans Crash, okay? It deals more damage when both these forms are available. You saw about 2,000 damage there. What happens when, you know, and what happens when the buffs run out? What happens then? Let's charge up. The karma, uh, the Titans crash without these, okay? Light, light, light. Light, heavy, heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. You'll see that you've got your uh, Titans crash there, but it doesn't have a glowing ring around it. 
the damage is much lower. It's only about 1,300 this time, all right? Let's see that again. Let's go all the way, okay? One, two, three. This time I won't explain things. You just watch my combos, okay? Watch my speed. Now it has like a glowing light around it. This means you've got your full mantra combo. Boom. Okay, you see how that works? Good. Now that you understand, now that you understand all this, right? Now that you understand all this, okay, what I want you to what I want you to work with it, with um on this one is is very simple, okay? Standard standard rotation is Tempest Form. Now you can choose Karma Breaker like however you want. Activate the first third mantra, it's okay. But key thing that I want you to note is after the Karma Breaker, there's a pause. There's always a pause. Do you see that? Even if I'm clicking my left click right now, there'll be a pause while your strikers go back into the neutral position. So what do you do then? Immediately dodge. It's smart to immediately dodge after that happens, okay? It's very, very simple to do that, and it's an easy way of getting yourself after, out of trouble. Also, here's the alternative. Karma Breaker, immediate... Even Surge has a delay, so actually dodging is usually the best, but... Yeah, basically that's the way to keep yourself alive because after the Karma Breaker, you are vulnerable for a second. Okay, let's head back to Ramsgate now and I'll show you all of this shit in actual combat. But we're going to put together a build. We're going to put together a build right now, okay? Uh, because currently, for those that may have noticed, what, I'm, what I was doing there was the upcoming uh, Forbidden Strikers build. So I don't want to... Showcase that too early. You know. Instead, we're gonna, gonna have a little bit of fun. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make an entirely new build. Uh, let's make it here. Not here. <laughs> Actually, yeah, let's build it in that slot because I don't need this anymore. Okay, Strikers. Urska. Bond. This is how I usually build stuff from scratch. Titans Crash, Cyclonic Strike Plate. Okay. Eh, I, do, I don't usually decide on my weapon cells first. Their Attunement. Um, Skullet. Sorry. No, wait, I do not. Actually, you're right. I do not want this. I want to force a dodge build. So if I'm going to force a dodge build, I'll start with these two puzzle pieces. Okay, maxed out, tenacious, and tough. Do, uh, the strikers do use a lot of stamina, but... Mm, do I want to go down the adrenaline pathway? Or do I want to go full berserker? Could go either of two ways. Uh, let's go adrenaline. Let's go adrenaline style, because may as well. Not too concerned on that. And we want overpower, so Togador's brawn right there. With Nice little power cell. Okay, great. Now I can have some Bazaka and Adrenaline. Okay, that looks good. Okay, let's go. So you guys want to see how this is used in actual combat. I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, what is my level? 14, okay. Well, we won't go anywhere too difficult. We'll just go straight to Cape Fury and I'll show you how to punch stuff down. Now, keep in mind that this is not a forbidden build, so I do have to dodge. I do have to actually dodge. Okay, great. Sorry, I was replying. Alright. Sorry, my auntie was asking me some questions about my show. And you know me, I'm a family man. You know, when family calls, I'm going to always respond on that shit. Okay. Let's 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 look at this um, in real time. 
Okay. Now this is how you. Hello, family. Hello, my dad. I think my dad's saying something outside the door. Anyway, he, if he needs me, he'll text me. Okay. Let's look at this like for real, real. Okay. We're going in. Now you may have seen my little glider flying video for those that are interested. Okay. I'll fly in. Now, keep in mind that this is a dodge build, so I actually have to dodge, which I forgot about. So I'm so used to just like, you know what, fuck it, I don't need to dodge. Now, if the creature is out of position... Okay, I've got my Tempest form now, right? I'll try and get my second mantra up. Now, it could be... Sometimes creatures move, that's okay. Okay, you little bum. There we go. Once I hit it with the Karma Breaker, all right, I've got my two buffs active. I'll just start hammering it, and then boom, that triggers overpower. Usually, sometimes you wanna, sometimes you take a hit or two, but that's okay. This is why the sturdy, the forbidden builds actually solve a lot of problems with the strikers, because <laughs> dodging with strikers is a pain in the ass. Okay, creature appeared far away. I'll just run over. I'll just run over. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Sometimes just to get more adrenaline on the uh, dodge version, I'll just roll a little bit. Okay, I always start out with my Tempest form first, and then I'll use my light and my light heavy heavy combos to start building up Mantra. Why does it work better this way? It's just faster. You save your heavy attacks when you know you can land them, and then oof, you hit that with the you hit them with the big um, crash. And after both mantras are active, right? Basically, you just want to continuously combo toward the triple mantra. And then you just clap. Like that. Okay, you clap it real easily. That's basically how you would run the strikers. That's basically how I run the strikers in actual combat. You're not, you notice I'm not focusing on one part or the next part. Or no, I'm just beating the shit out of the creature. And that's basically how the strikers work. They are blunt force weapon that is used, obviously, to uh, really inflict some serious damage. Now, knowing a behemoth attack pattern is another huge advantage of the strikers, because ultimately, what you're interested in doing is not so much, uh, it's not so much, uh, just comboing the thing as and when. What you want to do is you want to know when to best pull off your big triple combo bang, like that. If you know the behemoth's attack pattern, it is a huge advantage in doing so. Because, quite frankly, if you don't know the behemoth's attack pattern, you can get caught up midway and then you'll never finish your combo. The important thing is you do not get your mantra if you do not finish your combo. And you can also re-trigger the buffs early if you want to. That's what I often do. Sometimes with my third combo, I will start off with the heavy first to get that out of the way. And then I'll use the... Uh, light and the uh, medium combo after after I clear the heavy one. The thing is, after a dodge roll, you can actually do pretty good work with uh, your combos. And if you need to maintain the mantra meter, that's when you surge. Some people use surge as part of their combos. I'll actually show you a rushdown style instead. Um, I don't favor rushdowns because uh, I find that they actually lower your DPS. But some people prefer them, and I'll show them anyway. Um, it's just a different playstyle. Okay, if you want to rush down, right? What you will do is that... Okay, dodge. Combo complete, right? You surge through the Behemoth for additional damage, and you surge again after using your Tempest form. Okay, so if this happens... Okay, you need to do something like that. Surge before your next hit. But you see, I find it slower than just focusing on what you're supposed to do. Okay, I find it way, way, way slower. So I'm not a fan of the rushdown style. I'm not very good at it either. Oh, come on. This is why I prefer Sturdy, because if I had Sturdy, those guys would be gone. They would have been gone on the first instance. But if we're rushing down, right, as soon as I got my second thing, you know, I'd do that. As you can see, I feel the DPS is slower because you're just not focused on the target. You know? I'm not just I'm just not doing enough damage. And by the time it, it goes here, there, and everywhere, I've already lost all my mantra meters, you know? 
But I mean to each their own. Some people are really good at controlling that, some people are not, like me. In my case, I just I just prefer a focus style whereby I only use the surge as a mobility tool if I need to. I will actually continuously focus on comboing normally. And some and that's okay. Like you can use my style, you can use a rushdown style. Like mine is just use surge as and when it is convenient for you, not as an additional form of attack because I guess for some people they just like repositioning and continuously attacking. That's good for some people, I can't handle it, so I just keep it simple. Okay, when I just beat down the creature, it's just much easier. So again, I'll show you one more time. Alright, this time with some explanations additionally included, in case you want them. Let the Stormclaw come toward you. Now, nah, oops. Okay, failed on that one. That's okay. That can happen in real combat. Dodge through the attack, activate my ability. I will usually aim to combo as fast as possible, but sometimes that's not ideal. Either because you're not running sturdy or whatever, you can't just fight through the combo. But eventually, you do get to your full combo, and if the mantra meter runs out, look at that. You go back to only having one activated, so you gotta make sure you finish all your combos. Which is why sometimes I say it's important to get the heavies out of the way first. If the creature's already knocked down, then I'm usually okay to do the heavies later, but I try to get the heavies out of the way first. Notice, if the last hit of the combo doesn't land, it doesn't count as a completed combo. Damn, miscalculated. Sorry about that. That was entirely my bad. Much like with the Ember Main, you can knock it down, so... Sometimes I'll take advantage of the fact that I've got one combo done, and then I will uh, just be able to use that to... Like, I'll use the Tempest Form just to get additional distance on my Surge, because every time you use an ability, right, it resets your Surge. So, um, as you saw there, I was able to extend my Surge twice. I'll show that technique again, just in case, you know, somebody wants to pick it up. One, two, three, right? I use my Surge. If I use Tempest Form, I get my Surge back because it extends the Mantra Meter, okay? Using a technique extends the Mantra Meter. So you can use a double Surge to close in on your target a little more. You can also use a Surge to reposition yourself closer to the head, which would help you um, actually target the creature's head and deal more stagger damage. You know, it's really up to you how you want to run it, but basically that is how I run my Strikers. I hope that this video was informative and helpful and helps you understand how to combo properly with the strikers. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, if you want to, you can drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. And if you want to, you can also give like super thanks right now. I still haven't received any, so I don't know how it works, but apparently you can choose an amount and then your, com and your comment gets highlighted and all this other cool shit happens. Anyway, it makes me money as well, so if you want to do that, you can. Uh, let's move over to the tipper scene. Thank you so much to July's top tippers. Thank you so much, Bravo7910, Idget751, Breachinata, Sean, Lewis Grave, Druzy, GG, and Vamps. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hit that bell button, folks.